time tracking is one of the most accurate, interesting, and effective ways to increase your productivity. Where does all your time go? How long does it take to complete certain work on average? How long did you work on that project last week? The value of time tracking is immense. I'm Chris K. Daniels. I'm a filmmaker and entrepreneur, currently directing my biggest movie yet while running and operating three businesses on top of that. I find that if I'm not always being my most productive, I feel bad. Before I started time tracking, I was wasting all sorts of time I wasn't aware of. But now I've built a system that's improved my productivity and time management beyond imagine. This is that system. Hey everybody, welcome back. At long last, I want to start things off with a little thank you. Thanks for the support on my last video. That was um, unforeseen. The views that sucker got could fill a really small arena. So thank you for that. So today we're talking about time tracking. What is time tracking? Well, that's kind of self-explanatory, but it is basically tracking your time, tracking how you utilize your time more specifically. And I'm kind of going over how I use it, how I've kind of made it a super crucial part of my day and how I use that to better my productivity and my workflow overall. But basically for somebody like me, who's a mix of freelance and, you know, self-employed, do all sorts of things, but have a really methodic structure to the way I do all these many things, um, it's it's important, it's crucial, and it's, and it's never been so easy. Basically, it's clocking in everything that you do or every work thing that you do. I'm gonna be talking about the system I use within Toggle, but this works with everything. I mean, this is not a sponsored video. We're not sponsored by Toggle in any form like last time. Um, it's just the system I use, but anything that tracks your time and has a decent sort of project system in place, that'll work. Anything that has a counter and tells you how long you've been doing specific activities, that'll get the job done. But let's jump right on over to toggle.com. So, you know, you know how to sign up for things. You just click the big old sign up button. They've got a lovely color scheme up in here. So for Toggle specifically, once you get signed up and signed in, you end up on the web version of the app. And this is also on everything. This is on Android, this is on iOS. You can get an actual app for your computer, Mac, PC, you name it. But um, we're gonna look at the web app for now. And basically this is the main sort of timer screen. And you can see mine is filled up with things and colors and text and numbers. Yours won't be if this is your first time setting up a timer app, but um, let's let's try to simplify this a little bit. So you can see right now I am recording toggle video. As you know, you're watching it, but um, you can see I've been doing it for 11 minutes. Uh, you can see that it's based in a project system. You can see that that's my name right there, Chris, but let's look more specifically what all these things are. So. We'll come back to this screen, actually, I think. Let's start off with the projects screen. So again, apply this to whatever you're using, but if it's a good timer app, it should have a project management system. And so for me, like I said, I have a lot of projects that I work on on a given week. And so without a proper management system with a nice color scheme in place, I would be all over the place. And I used to be all over the place, but you can see uh, it is broken down into all sorts of different projects. And we'll start with the project column. The projects are organized by color. So you can see things that are yellow are generally film projects that I have in the midst. Formal Affair, that's a short film. Become Ultima, that's a short film. Crypt TV Pitch, that was a pitch treatment I was developing for Crypt. Yeah, so yellow is film-based projects. And then I have other projects that are colored with green. Those are Cinemonic Entertainment Course, Cinemonic Podcast, Cinemonic Show. So clearly those are things that have to do with Cinemonic, which is my uh, media company. So those are three different projects. Cinemonic Entertainment Core is things for the business as a whole. Cinemonic Podcast is the podcast. Cinemonic Show is the show, obviously, right? And so those are the colors. Obviously I have those in my head, so it's easy to explain, but basically to give it a little more depth, I use the Toggle specifically has a system for clients. So Toggle is great if you're actually, you know, clocking in your billable hours as well. I personally don't use it for that. Again, I have a lot of varying projects and a lot of them are for myself and growing brands and growing content online. So yes, it helps me when I am doing client work, if it's freelance things, but I, I use it for everything. So to say that I would just use it for that, would limit how I would use it. So I actually created my own system for how I use clients. I kind of use clients as tags. And Toggle does have a tags system, but I'm just not crazy about it. You, if you've seen my Tic Tech video, you see that I am a sucker for tags and I use an intense tag system in um, Tic Tech and my main project manager. But I just kind of replaced the clients option in Toggle with tags. So in my client section, you can see I have Chris Cinemonic, director, friends, general, North Andover producer, school, side projects. And I've had more in the past. I've deleted some. I'm still kind of reworking the way I'm using clients because this is kind of a new development for how I'm doing this. But basically those are 
technically clients, but really they're kind of tags about a general category of like what branch I'm kind of working on. So if it's Chris, it's things that are personal for me, whether that's exercise, self-development stuff, wealth stuff, whatever, things that are personally for me, solo. Um, Cinemonic is stuff for the company. Director is stuff that's things that I'm directing, obviously film projects, like I was saying before. Friends is if I'm doing something that is work-based, but it's more of like a favor or something I'm doing for friends, then I can label it like that. Like I've made people, um, you know, production reels in the past. I've helped people, you know, manage systems on their computer. Um, I've ran numbers for people, whatever the thing is that I'm doing just for the sake of friends. Um, sometimes I like to clock that in. It's always good for reference just because I use so many analytics and stuff to look at how long it takes me to do certain things, whatever. Friends, general is stuff that's more like, I, I don't use general as much as I thought I would when I first made it, but that would be things like, you know, moving or if I'm fixing my car or fixing a bike, I don't know, something like that. Again, general gets a little vague. That's why I don't really use it as much, but North Andover, those are town specific projects that I was doing more so uh, earlier on in the summer. Producer, things that I'm producing, school, things that uh, I'm doing for school classes and side projects, which right now is a lot of things. So I'm actually gonna end up splitting side projects up into a lot of subheaders at some point, but basically side projects started off as just things like this, things that aren't necessarily one of my main projects that I focus the majority of my time on, but as side projects grow, they become main projects. So I'll have to split that up. But you can see that my system of clients is pretty much a system of tags. And the reason I use clients instead of tags is mainly because in toggle uh the under the project screen you can filter by client team and project name but not tags and so if i wanted to filter by client i could say okay things that are director based great let's see okay cool those are things that i'm uh directing so if tags were implemented into this screen i would probably use tags so if you're in another thing that's not toggle then tags is probably the way to go and if they ever make that change i'll probably switch just because it it's kind of messy using clients as tags but whatever it totally gets the job done so anyway that's my system that's my structure for organize everything now let's talk about actually timing things right the purpose of the software um so you can see right here on the project screen each given project uh gives you is it i don't know if it's overall oh i guess yeah it's, it's overall um the status the time you've put into each given project but so here's a nice general look at the project the client the status which is the time you put into it and then the team and the team again if you're using this for more of a team-based situation i'm not that's not the way i you know that's not the way my workflow goes so if you're trying to create something similar to the way that i structure it it's probably somebody if you're kind of more self-startery run your own businesses whatever you do online content freelance. This structure will more so work for that. But if you work on a team and if you're part of like a company and you're using Toggle, you're probably going to use it a little bit differently, but this still applies. But anyway, now talking about time, we'll go back up to the screen we started on, the timer screens. You can see now I'm at 20 minutes for recording this Toggle video, but basically now let's jump down to the next section. You can see it's organized by color. And again, those colors coordinate to the colors I set for each given project. And you can see this is this week. So you can see this week so far, I have uh, 61 hours 11 minutes 46 seconds uh, clocked in for things I've, I've worked on. That's just work. I, I just clock in work and exercise on toggle, but you know, you can maybe clock in hours you're spending doing other things. If you're going to end up using that to kind of see how much time you spend playing video games or maybe how much time you spend watching YouTube, maybe you use it for that just to kind of put into perspective how much time you spend doing things that aren't work. Maybe that's beneficial for you. For me, it's not. I just like to clock the work so I know how long it takes me to do productive things. Um, but like I was saying, organized by yellow, uh, it's a directing project, specifically it's for the good of the people. So you can see that has been the bulk of my week. Um, and then it, it, it went, dwindles down, wealth development, um, that's things like investing, cinematic podcast, that's the podcast I do for uh, my company again, um, and then so on, so on, so on. Those are the things that I've spent the majority of my time on in this week span, in my 61 hours. And those numbers are determined, again, by this. So if I were to say, record this toggle video for 20 hours straight, if I were, if I just kept going and kept fumbling over my words, like I tend to, and this went on for six to 30 hours, then the side hustles project color here would get bigger and bigger and bigger and maybe take over as the most worked on project of the week. If you hold down on it, you can see specifically how long you can see for the good of the people so far, I've put 15 hours, nine minutes and 23 seconds into this week. And that has been 
25% of my work week. And that's starting to get a little hint at what's to come here, but um, that's very effective for looking at how you spend your week. And that's one of the big benefits here is you see the percentage of time you're putting into projects. So filmmaking is the main thing that I do. So it makes sense that the project and the color that I spend the most time on a week is the project that I'm directing actively right now. Um, wealth development, that should actually be a little less than 18%, but for the given week, there's been a lot of investing things happening. Um, let's just say they haven't gone great this week, but still uh, there's been time put into wealth development this week, but usually something like Cinemonic Podcast or my side hustles will be in second place under my uh, directing filmmaking stuff. And you can see as we scroll down here, it is the day by day breakdowns. So you can see today so far, I started my day at six, a little late, I usually start my days out at five, 5.30. But 6 a.m. I exercised, um, then I showered, I didn't clock that in. Um, and then I started task management for six minutes at 7.08 a.m. Started writing at 7.14, then you, so on and so forth. You can see that I edited for an hour and 21 minutes, then I did some investing when the markets opened at, uh, for 32 minutes, and then I set everything up here, set my lighting, set everything, camera set up under side hustles for an hour and 21 minutes, and then you're caught up. So if I were to click stop right now, you'd see that my recording toggle video automatically adds to it. But we're not done doing that. So you can easily click the continue time entry to continue if you either accidentally stop that or you just wanna pause it, you take a bathroom break or a food break or whatever. That's a nice easy way in toggle to stop and then start. I can really accurately look at how much time I'm spending on each given task. And the colors help. I love colors to organize my projects, but you can see where my time is going and then better manage how you use your time going forth. And that's that's how I really use Toggle. That's why it's really beneficial besides just it is cool, I guess, to uh, clock in everything you're doing to see how much time you're spending working, but it's, it's effective when you start looking into the specifics. So I can look at, you know, yesterday, 15 hours, 43, three minutes overall of a work day. But um, I did business research in the morning at five-ish, uh, task management. I always usually start my day, you can see task management kind of starts the day on most of these. And you can see then, again, there, there's a pattern there. You can see the pattern, you can see where the most of your time goes. You can see yesterday, I put some time into expense management. Um, for Cinemonic, then for general career work. So I did a lot of spreadsheet stuff on my expenditures over the summer, now that it's September. Site optimization, that's a, one of my side hustles, one of my side businesses. Um, I was optimizing the site. For example, some of my side hustles I run with partners. So it helps to see if you are actually clocking and how much time you're putting in a week. And then you can send that in. And if you're actually being billed for it, you can send that in. So when I'm doing certain things of freelance editing, I can specifically say, oh, well, I did seven hours on this. So if you're actually paying me hourly, then you know, here's the numbers for that. I don't like to work hourly, I like to work project-based, but that's a whole nother thing. And it goes on, you can see that I edited for two hours here, uh, uploaded for 51 minutes, marketed for two hours, exercised for two hours, did brand growth for two hours. So that's a day where I'm kind of jumping between a lot of tasks. So I had a lot more on my plate yesterday to get done, smaller spans of time, but then you can take a look at like Wednesday. Wednesday, for example, you can see I edited for the good of the people for nine hours. So from 6 a.m. to 8.47 p.m. with certain other things uh, spread in the middle there, I believe. So that gets really helpful when you can see things like the fact that I worked for nine hours on For the Good of the People and it, it ends up being much more effective for me to work nine hours on Wednesday rather than three hours on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday. You know what I mean? I get more done editing. I mean, specifically for editing, I guess. Maybe it's different for certain tasks that I do, but for something like that where it's super like, okay, focus mode. Once you get into it, you kind of get faster as you go because you're you're in a bit of a flow state. It, it works out much better for me to work sort of straight like that. So instead of spreading, spreading that editing out, you can see that it's more effective and that I get more done on this day doing nine hours than three hours on each of these these days. So looking at things like that can be really helpful. And I mean, overall, just looking at these days, having such a, an accurate count of all the hours that I'm spending doing certain things at work, it's really good to see where the bulk of my time is going. So if it feels like in a given week, wow, I feel like I haven't gotten a lot done, or I feel like I got much more done last week. Oh, I can specifically look like maybe I'm wasting, you know, too much time doing wealth development this week, doing um, expense reports and investing and all that. And I would have to agree, future Chris, that is definitely probably gonna be the case. But you can see, okay, let me go back to this week in time. And oh, the reason I didn't get as much done this week is because I wasted a lot of time investing two hours here, you know, investing here on Monday, I spent five hours and 23 minutes. So that type of information can be really helpful to see if you're wasting time or 
the opposite. Maybe you get a lot done in a given week and you want to say, okay, well, I got a lot done this week. Where did the bulk of my time go? And maybe it's a week where I have, you know, 50% for the good of the people directing. Maybe it's 50% working on side hustles and I got I made a lot of money that week perhaps. And maybe that means that, oh, these side hustles should be kind of prioritized more because I'm making a lot of money doing this. Whatever the thing you're looking at, there's so much information to be had by clocking everything in. And that helps me exponentially when it comes to uh, managing my projects and seeing where my time goes and seeing how to best use my time. And it can be super beneficial too for predicting how much time it's gonna take you to do something or for clients or for business partners, whatever, and knowing how much time it takes you to do a given project. And something like a directing project for the good of people, which I've been working on for months, that's more so for me to know how much time I'm putting into a project like this. But for smaller scale project, it's also great for that. So if I go to, let's jump over to the analyze panel. So this is a way to look at everything quickly under the timer panel. And you can really get in there depthy if you scroll down and look through, but the analyze section is where the real depth comes in. So now we're still on this week, like we were up there. You can see now though, we've got pie charts, we've got numbers, we've got bar graphs, we've got more thorough looks at how my week has been going. So you can see um, in the pie chart, again, with the colors, everything comes back to my system of colors and projects. And again, whatever software you're using, I recommend Toggle because it is free, at least the version of it that I use. If you start working with a team and stuff, they charge you, but that's why it's worth shouting Toggle out in this video because I've been using it for many months and I have not paid a lick to use it. So that that's a killer service right there, am I right? But so anyway, back to the analyze panel, you can see um, you have this week, you can organize things by duration like we were looking at before, but you can see for the good of the people directing 15 hours, wealth development 11 hours. So the exact same thing we were looking at over there, but now you can see it in you know, graph form, in chart form. But I was saying uh, before I got totally sidetracked like I do, um, I was saying, okay, how much time does it take me to finish a given project? So if I organize something by freelance gigs, so this is under the, you can see client, again, why I use client is because it's so incorporated into Toggle, but you can see the client is a little grayed off to the right here, and then the project is to the left, and of course, the color. So if I organize it by just the project freelance gigs, let's see. Uh, you can see this week I have not done any freelance gigs, but if I go to last week, you can see I spent 11 hours and 56 minutes doing, specifically I was editing. I know what project I was editing because I was only editing one freelance gig last week, but you know, you could even say, and even if I wanted to edit it, you could say, click right here and you could say, uh, NA camp video editing because I know that is what I was editing and it'd be the same. I could copy and paste that all over here and then I could pop, copy and paste that under uploading just for future reference. So I have the exact amount of time it took me to do this given project, but let's just put it back to editing for my OCD sake. I know the length of that video. I know how long it took me to edit that video, how long it took me to upload that video. It takes 21 minutes to upload, but then editing takes a lot longer, you know, 11 hours in this case. That's great for estimating if I'm gonna take on another freelance project. I know exactly how long it takes me, so that helps for knowing how much I should charge a person, or if it's hourly, then I send those hours in. Great, that's super effective. And the same thing for you know my my podcast. I edit the podcast every week. Um, it's called Better Off Better. Shout out if you wanna go listen to it. But you can see that if I look at last week, um, Cinemonic Podcast, I spent overall 11 and a half hours on it, but you can see that some of that was ordering. We were ordering a bunch of new equipment because we made a big move last month. Um, some of it is recording. You can see three hours recording it, but editing, that is the bulk of it. So if you don't look at this, cause this is editing from actually the week prior, but you can see that starting on Monday to Tuesday this week, I spent the majority of the time editing. It took me about, I could calculate these all together, or actually I can look at, you know, 11 and a half hours spent total. Let's subtract three hours, it's about nine hours, about a half hour there, eight, about seven and a half. You can say estimate, I could actually run these numbers with a calculator or somebody with a better brain, but um, for estimate's sake, let's just say seven hours. So it took me seven hours to edit last week's podcast. And then I could go to the week before, which was August 17th to August 23rd. And this is something that I actually do. This is how I've estimated how long it takes me on a given week to edit the podcast. And we have a specific structured schedule with when the podcast comes out and when the video comes out, where the when the audio comes out, all those things. So knowing exactly how long it takes me helps me to schedule when I'm gonna edit it. So for me, I edit Monday mornings because I know how long it's gonna take me. If I start at 5 a.m., I'll generally be done around 12 to two, depending on how long the podcast is that week. And so if I wanted to look at the week before, so 
multiple ways to do this. You can go to the summary, details, weekly. I think the easiest way to figure something like this out, I would go to weekly. I would go to, uh, this This is the week I wanna look at, the 17th of August to the 23rd of August. And you group by project and group by yourself too if you wanna see how much time you put in for that given week. But you can see my total hours right there are 55, slacking that week. But um, if you go over to right here, Cinemonic Podcast, you can see that 817, that was the Monday, five hours and 40 minutes, 818, um, six hours, 22 minutes. So that's actually the reason it's a different date is because I went overnight past midnight. But so that week, it took me about 12 hours to edit that week's podcast. So that was a, a hefty one, but you can see I can kind of average out. So if I go to the week before that, you can see three hours, 15 minutes, then again, overnight into three hours, 53. So that's a little less. That's like seven to eight hours editing the podcast. So you can see that I can block out this amount of time with more accuracy. And I look at the week before um, and I see 529 and three. So about about eight and a half hours to edit that week's podcast. And so I can kind of get a, a, a mean there, get an average of all of those numbers and see roughly how long it takes me uh, on average to edit every week's podcast. And then I can carve out that amount of time in the week, knowing that it has to get done by Tuesday morning. I know that I have to do this much on Monday, or if I want to do it on Sunday and Monday, I can split up the amount of hours that it'll take me on average. And that's a super valuable way to create a schedule. And that's what I've been doing for things like the podcast, things like editing, things like business stuff, knowing how long on average it takes me to do these things across month spans. Um, it helps me create a more thorough, accurate schedule that I actually follow. So that's definitely how I recommend using this no matter what you do, whether you're an entrepreneur out there, whether you're a freelancer, whether you're, you know, working a full-time job and then doing side gigs, writing a book, whatever the thing is, this is the most effective way to organize your your life to figure out how much time it takes you to do things to plan how much time it's going to take you to do things and to look at your weeks how much time you're spending doing things how do you get more time doing this thing more time doing this thing and then thus get much more done and finish things and do things and achieve things also just to look at it real quickly this is the web app like i was saying before but i use the actual windows app when i'm just quickly setting up projects and to add add projects to your toggle in this case you just click here new project if i want to say um, I'm starting a shoe company. We're going to call it, you know, shoe mates and I'm going to color it, uh, blue in Chris's workspace. Yeah. That's just my default workspace. If you have a really intense life or you work in teams or whatever, you'll probably have multiple workspaces. So I set my client, this would probably be a side project, at least for now. And I would create that project. And now I have a project called shoe mates. And let's say I'm going to start, you know, product design. So boom product design. Here's a nice example for you. Um, I would choose my project shoe mates, boom. And then again, I don't use tags, but you could add a tag right there. And then you could, uh, if you upgrade your toggle account specifically, that's how you start doing billable hours. But anyway, for me, I would just click start. And now I am clocked in. I am two seconds into product design for my new company shoe mates. And if we were gonna look at, before I jumped away there, the desktop app, the quick little small screen desktop app, let's look at it without all that clutter. Um, you could say, oh, it didn't auto add the project, but no problem. Oh, here we go. Here's a mistake in action. So to correct the mistake, you literally just click on the project and you get the details right here. And you can click, oh wait, I wanted this to be on Shoemates, the side project, and now it's corrected. And this is useful too. If you your time is wrong or you forget to clock in or you forget to clock out, this is also where you change that in the app. So if I actually started at 11.04, add in that extra 10 minutes, boom, done. Now you see 10 minutes and eight seconds on product design for Shoemates. Okay, great. Let's say it took me 10 minutes to design that product. And now that we're in the app, let me show you how to do it on here. It's even faster, even easier. Now I want to do, um, you know, maybe some marketing for, you can see it's trying to auto fill me, but uh, you can see that maybe I want to do some marketing for um, shoe mates, right? Start that clock at the project shoe mates. Boom. Now I'm clocked in and I'm marketing shoe mates. And then at the end of the week, if I really want to get serious about shoe mates, you can see how much time I put in. Maybe I put in five hours in the first week and I achieve blank. And then I can look at the fact that, oh, well next week I want to get twice as much done. So in theory, I see that I put in five hours. Let's say I put in 10 hours doing the same things. In theory, I would get double the amount done. But shoe mates doesn't exist. I'm not starting a shoe brand. Let's delete all these. This is how you delete it. Click it, boom, delete entry. Shoe mates, click it, delete. 
boom, delete entry. You know, easy peasy. It's the same thing on the site if you wanna edit things on the web app. And oh, here's perfect. We can say that I did all those uh, examples of Shoemates, my new startup. And in the site app, it's the same thing, but a little different. You just click the little number to see all the many different instances of recording this toggle video. And if I wanna change the time, I can just click here to 10 or to 11:14, I want to change that to that. Actually, I stopped that clock at 11:17. Add those extra three minutes, and every minute counts when you're clocking, and you want to be accurate. And don't lie to yourself. You know what's the point of that if you're doing time clocking for yourself and to better your project management and your productivity. And then to change, let's say you want to change the project. I actually don't want it to be side hustles. I want it to be recording toggle video. Let's say it's for school. Let's say I'm making this video for class. Then I just switch it right there. And then it'll actually change all of those over to school. So now you see every time I'm recording toggle video, it's actually for school. It's not for school. It's a side hustle. Let's switch it back. So hopefully that gives you a look at toggle, how I use toggle to manage the many, many things that I do. And Boy, oh boy, can it be stressful, but having a system like this in order definitely creates a better management and for planning my weeks, planning my days, planning my minutes even. If you're not clocking in the hours you're putting into working right now, you should be. You will become a more effective person, I swear it. I doubted it at first myself. Um, it just comes down to doing it. The, another benefit, just to jump back here for like two seconds, having the, <clears throat> the app installed on your computer instead of just using the web app, it actually reminds you. So if you're doing things on the computer, if you're in Word or if you're editing in Premiere, it'll remind you to clock in. So it'll see that you're doing things and wonder why you're not clocking those hours in. So it can be annoying if you don't wanna clock certain things and if you're watching videos or if you're scrolling the internet, but when you're actually doing things and you forget to clock in, it can be very useful because you can say, oh damn, I forgot to clock in, let me start the timer and then maybe add the 10 minutes that you forgot to clock in right there. So I definitely recommend getting the app if you're doing things on the computer all day. Yeah, so it really becomes uh, creating systems. Everything is creating systems, creating habits. And this is a habit that you wanna add to your life. Clock in the productivity or whatever you wanna clock in, but clock in the things that you're doing. Having reports every week, knowing where your time is going is super important, especially as a self-starter, self developy entrepreneurial type. So hopefully that all makes sense. Hopefully I wasn't all over the place too much for you. That's kind of how I talk, but it really is great. It really is a great system. Uh, I definitely recommend Toggle, but uh, totally not sponsored. Use whatever you want to use. All timer apps generally do kind of the same thing. Toggle's just free. Free's nice. So thank you so much if you're still watching at this point. I know this was a long video, so if you pushed through, then you rock. Um, thanks for the support. Again, thank you so much. If you haven't seen my last video, the Tic Tech video, that's another great system that I use. Um, I'm going to make a couple more videos just kind of talking about my workflow. I've spent a lot of time developing um, my workflow. And I mean, you can see here at my reports, I put a lot of time in. I mean, this week it's Friday, but I'll have more hours by the end of the week. So it's a slow week, but 61 hours. Last week, 73. My slacker week, 55, 75, 79. I work a lot. And like I said, it's a lot of different projects. You can imagine I have a lot of systems in check and in place to, to get things done, to get a lot of things done. So stay tuned, subscribe. I'm gonna have more videos like this going over my workflow, my systems, the things that keep me sane. And um, if you haven't seen my Tick Tick video, go check that out. Project management is crucial and it works hand in hand with a, uh, a timer, something like Toggle. But um, comment, let me know your thoughts. Do you use Toggle? Tell me how you use it. Do you time anything? Tell me, I love hearing people's workflow. That, um, that type of lame stuff excites me. Share, share your stories. Reach out to me if you wanna support me or see the other things that I'm doing. Follow me on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram's linked down below, at ICChrisD. Uh, you know, look me up, Chris K. Daniels, I'm places. And you saw that I've been doing a lot of investing. If you wanna support the cause even more, click my link down below to start investing in Robinhood. If you click my link, you get a free stock and I get a free stock. So, you know, if you're interested in investing and finance things, maybe I'll make videos on things like that in the future at some point. But for now, click that link, check it out, get a free stock and hook me up too, you know what I'm saying? But again, thank you so much for the support. If you're still watching right now, that's crazy. Hopefully you got something of value out of this video or at least enjoyed it in some form. So again, thank you so much. I will see you next time.